r slash ask reddit. What's the saying that you've always hated? Because I said so. When people say, just say in, as a way of trying to hammer in their passive aggressive point. I did so much in super passive aggressive situations that in a time I hear it, even if not in that context, it automatically makes me super upset. Similarly, when someone makes a poor argument and you point it out, they respond with, yeah but still. I'll tell you later. Background to that reasoning, I'm deaf and I want to be involved in group conversation, and I've always been told off. I tell you later. ETA. I'm stalked. So many people go through same thing as I have. It's saddening how deaf. HOH or not even any of these hates the same saying as I do. Thank you all for comments. Points and even a silver reward. I love reading all of the comments. Also deaf. I hate being told never mind as well when I ask someone to repeat something. As a resident I hear this way too much. Only in Ohio do you get all four seasons in one week. Nope it all happens all over the place. It happens every year during spring and fall. I remember overhearing a conversation when I was in Boston for an event where a woman was laughing and saying, you know what they say about Boston. If you don't like the weather, wait a few minutes. I've heard that exact saying in reference to my hometown. I realized it's probably a pretty common thing. Anytime you start dating someone and a friend or relative warns you that if you ever hurt them, they will kill you. My MIL did this at my wedding. First. No you won't. You'll just talk mad shit about me if I ever break their heart. Second. Why are you threatening me with violence at my wedding? To be honest they are probably already talking mad shit about you. When I was in 7th grade, my girlfriend's dad showed me his gun collection and said, let this be a warning. What? You're going to shoot a 13 year old? You won't get a job by staring on your computer all day. I was a kid and wanted to be a programmer. I had a horrible, nasty old woman for a 5th grade teacher. This was probably around the year 2000. Her classroom had 4 old IBM computers and 2 old dot matrix printers. Only 1 or 2 of the computers worked and 1 printer never worked. I spent time on the issue computers trying to figure out what was wrong. Reconfiguring the printer. Got it to work eventually. And such. She told my mom during parent-teacher conferences that he's a smart kid, but he should spend more time studying rather than wasting it on those computers. I'm a computer engineer now. I'm quite happy with my decision to spend time on the computer all day. Live each day as if it were your last. Okay. I quit my job. Bought a Mercedes and maximumed out all my credit cards on hookers and blow. What will I do tomorrow? Do it until you're right. Shouldn't take too long. I brought you into this world and I can take you out of it. Yeah my mother is crazy. Edit. Thank you for the silver it's my first award and cake day wishes I'm so glad I joined Reddit. Remember. You can take her out of it too like the Sith rule of two. Good. Good. Your anger gives you power. Makes you strong. Stop crying or I'll give you a reason to cry. Edit. I've been on Reddit 4 years now and this is the comment that blows up. I'm the father of an adult. I wish I had the right and perfect thing to say. Especially for those of you who share this as a painful childhood memory. All I have is. I hear you. I believe you. I'm sorry it happened. You did not deserve it. I used to get told this all the time as a kid and it just made me cry harder. I never have and never will say it to my kids. My mom said it too and I'd get more upset. Scared what the reason would be. He's mean because he likes you and doesn't know what to do about it. No mom. He's just a bully. If he liked me, I wouldn't have come home with a black eye and bloody nose now would I. It's a delusional statement that gives young girls a mindset that hurting them is a good thing. It leaves them vulnerable to abuse. I'm so glad I got away. The last straw was when he slammed me into my locker and laughed as his friends all hit me. That's not right. Don't ever let anyone tell you something like this. I mentioned this before on a similar question. But I hate it when you yawn. Through no fault of your own. And some can says something along the lines of. Oh sorry. Am I keeping you up? Gets freaked. It's a yawn. It happens. Flattery will get you nowhere. The opposite is usually true. Nowhere will get you flattery. No. 
Insults will get you somewhere. Are you working hard or hardly working? God I hate that saying. Reply with. Pays the same. Barb. Regardless of what their name is. Boss makes a dollar. I make a dime. That's why I poop on company time. And for the British. Boss makes a pound. I make a pence. That's why I shit at the company's expense. Back when my dad was sick. And it was clear he wasn't going to last much longer. I was sitting on a bench in the hallway of an oncology ward trying to gather my thoughts. I was 20 at the time and barely keeping it together. An older man walked by and slapped me on the back. Something else I hate. And said. Cheer up. It's not that bad. And I have never had smoke come out of my ears quite like that. I still think back to that moment and wish I'd been able to pick my jaw off the floor in time to catch him before he got on the elevator and tell him exactly why it sometimes is that bad. But he was gone before I recovered. In short, don't ever tell someone to cheer up, especially when they are sitting in the hallway of an oncology ward. It's common sense. Not because some things aren't actually common sense, but because when someone tells you that it's so you shut up and don't question what makes it so obvious. I had a professor in college that asked our class to explain to him what the classifications are to consider something common sense and not a single person could do it. Moral of the lesson? Common sense implies a universal truth, but in reality is completely subjective. I had a professor that said common sense is biased based on your past experiences. So what's common sense for you will not be common sense to me. He told us to tell that to our parents when we went home and they said something like all that college learning and you still don't have common sense. Go big or go home. Yeah I'm going home man. This is my favorite saying of all time for that reason. I freaking love going home. Anything along the lines of if you can dream it you can do it. Anything is possible. Or other self-aggrandizing encouragement. It's just self-serving, if not entirely wrong. I've always disliked this sentiment for the same reason as you. I developed a new dislike for it lately too. My son, who is just shy of two years old, was born blind. It's not treatable. We're decades away from anything that would be able to fix it. And even if a miracle breakthrough happens any possible option would be really invasive and risky. In all practicality, he will live out the rest of his life without vision. When we found out, people tried to help out by saying things like, he'll still be able to do anything. This won't change things. Like, no, that's just flat out not true. My son will not be able to do things that require a heavy visual component. He's not going to be a race car driver or actually drive a car at all. He likely won't be an architect or a graphic designer, or a police officer, or an expert marksman. There are a lot of things he can't do, no matter how badly he may want to do them. And the idea that you can achieve anything by just trying hard enough and wanting it bad enough is toxic for anyone, but more so with people who have disabilities that limit what they can do. I don't focus on that. He's young enough that he needs encouragement still. To we don't talk about the can't part of things very much at this point, and instead put effort in encouraging him to keep doing things he likes. But wanting to do something and putting effort toward it does not magically make you able to overcome all obstacles. Some barriers are too big to be overcome by sheer will, no matter who you are. Good things come to those who wait, couldn't be more wrong. I've waited long enough, still nothing. Keep waiting, you'll get your g-string soon enough. Pain is weakness leaving the body. No. Pain is a warning system about the limits of your body. Ha. Is what you get out of a pig when you kick it in the ass. Also hay is for horse. No I said hay. And you know it. Now freaking hay. I need your help. Which is exactly why instead of saying. Hay is for horses. I say. Hay is for horses. So that there's no confusion. If you can't beat M. Join M. Sorry. Not gonna sacrifice my principles. Sleeping like a baby. Or slept like a baby. Do these people not have babies? Babies in general don't sleep very well. The only way the saying makes sense is if they woke up often crying, hungry, and or pooping themselves. My dad sometimes says this when asked how he slept. I slept like a baby. I woke up every hour screaming. 
and shitting your pants. It can only get better. Freak you. Now all I can do is think through all the many, many ways that it can always, always get worse. If you can't handle me at my worst, then you don't deserve me at my best. Hate this one so much. It's often used to justify toxic shitty behavior. No one is entitled to treat others like crap and be excused for it. The kicker? Their best isn't really that far off from their worst in most cases. Their best is them not treating you like a piece of shit for 10 minutes. It could always be worse. Or at least you don't have it as bad as. So like you're only allowed to feel suffering if you have the absolute worst possible situation at any given time. Are you only allowed to be happy if you have the absolute best situation at a given point in time? What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. No. The amount of people who have gone through the most brutal traumatic experiences and now suffer PTSD or a million other stresses from it are not necessarily stronger. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Authority figures, teachers, parents, etc. often use this to soothe victims of non-physical bullying, essentially telling the victims that they shouldn't be upset about what people say because it's not like they're getting it. As an adult of verbally and emotionally abusive parents who also dealt with verbal bullying in school, words hurt. Words can scar you for life. They can alter your perception of yourself and change who you are as a person in horrible ways that take years and years of therapy to undo. The customer is always right. No, they aren't. Edit. Wow. One of my first Reddit comments and it blew up like this. Thanks for the awards kind Redditors. Or the variant. The customer is king. I come from France. When a king is abusive, we behead them. Try me. Infoi. Edit. Just to use everyone's favorite saying on Reddit and as it's topical. Wow. First gold. Thank you. Kind stranger. Seriously though. Thanks. Everything happens for a reason. I just don't think it does. Edit. Just to clarify I don't mean in a cause and effective way I mean like destiny. Comma. Or a god's plan. Apologies. I have nothing against religion. Sometimes the reason is that you're dumb and make bad decisions. I can be your best friend. Or your worst enemy. Thanks for the psycho warning. I'll take neither. Update. Okay. This comment is gilded? Thanks. Lol. And my inbox exploded. What the freak? Reddit? By the way. To those asking. This isn't something I've heard someone actually say. But it's something I've seen on tons of profiles on dating sites and personal ads back when I was single. You got these impression when you hated someone so much. Let's lessen your hate and anger. Click like and share the video. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching.